Hello. Nice, nice to meet you all. Very quiet place, all the people here. It's uh, very much appreciated that you're here. Pauschal call from an ops perspective. I think we have to explain what should that mean. So let's simply start what we've done before. It's my pleasure to see that Bartek's here. And Joey, I see Joey over there. Um, of course, it's a shameless plug. If you stand here in front, you need to show the people what you've done before, but maybe someone missed it. And I think it's polite because it's not about me, it's about these people uh, that I really like to mention. And uh, two years ago, we talked about a lot of the things that I want to show you today about this interoperable approach, about Linux, Mac OS, uh, putting secure shell, PowerShell core, putting all the things together. And I had a pleasure to um, record in a very early stage a podcast with Batek and uh, Joey. And I want to, uh, I want to show you something, uh, a little audio file from that recording. Um, after that, last year here in Hanover, maybe the one or the other uh, saw that. Um, I had a talk with Batek together. And we talked more or less about the other direction that I will show you today. Uh, last year, we talked about administrating Linux from Windows. Today, we want to change the perspective. But first, a word from Joey. Nothing makes me happier than walking into a coffee shop and, and seeing someone with a shiny $3,000 MacBook Pro uh, uh, or a Surface Book, uh, <laughs> you know, running uh, Tmux with, you know, with four yeah. terminal windows. and, and and this is, um, you know, I think it's, it's really a, a beautiful thing. Your wish, my command. So, to me, the journey to this uh, session began with the term DevOps. I got to commit that I really had a wrong understanding of the term DevOps. To me, <coughs> it was just a little bit of development and a little bit of operating and we come together. But maybe I'm totally wrong. And one of my Twitter friends in air quotes showed me that I might have a different opinion here. He says DevOps is something else. The inner heart of DevOps is run your own systems, create your own systems, run it, maintain it. So this is pretty offending from, for, for someone who's used to work with licensed products, and we're very happy to keep them just running. I never created an operating system myself. I guess only few people did that. Some, some are involved in that here at the conference. Linus Torvalds, uh, for example, and beyond that, create own applications. Lots of you do that. But what about all the admins, all the operators? Uh, what are they doing in their time? So. To me, when I, when I met PowerShell for the first time, it was solving a problem from an administrator's perspective. So I thought I'd like to split it up. Um, if we talk about PowerShell here, about PowerShell Core, do we talk from a developer's perspective, from a developer's background, or we talk, do we talk from an operator's background? And I uh, would claim that this is very different. So let's see how that works. Someone introduced me to that new PowerShell called Posh. I think, I think the name is funny, P-W-S-H. Um, and it runs on Linux and it runs on macOS. Very nice idea. I really like the idea of having open source software. I really like the idea of choosing any operating system that I, like, that I want to have. But um, on the other hand, let's be honest, the companies that I work for, they don't have a web server team. They don't have a database team. They have a Windows database team for SQL Server, things that Chrissy does. Or they have a web server team for Apache web services, usually Linux. And you rarely find it that people bridge the gaps between the operating system if it comes to mere models. We mustn't talk about the echo chambers that we're in. I think everything that I explain in this hour is actually, I would suppose, not true for you. But are you the mere mortals? Are you the regular ones? Or to quote a famous German uh, football coach, uh, are you the normal ones? I would suppose you're not. 
So keep that in mind and change the perspective of all the other guys uh, out there. What is that all about? I always struggle at this conference with content that, to be honest, many, many sessions, I don't have an idea what they're talking about because I'm not in the pasta business. I'm not in the sequel business. And I think it's getting up and up every year. So I always want to come back to the basics because I know from the talks out there at the coffee bar, there are lots of people for the first time, they're new to PowerShell and they think it's, it's amazing, but they missed the first and the second floor. So this is what I want to come back when I say first impressions um, seen from a, from a regular guy. And this, the second thing is to, to feed your technical needs. Of course, I want to do uh, something about the, the holy grail or whatsoever. I guess something is, uh, Joey said, more or less something like that. Administrating Active Directory Exchange from other operating systems. Is that possible? We will see that in a few minutes. And finalize, we will, finally, we will wrap that up. And uh, I'm, I'm quite interested and curious what you think about that. Let's start with the very basic stuff. The typical admin out there doesn't even get where all the commandlets come from. They don't even recognize that they get more than just an update every half year in Windows 10. With every release, you get new commandlets because the commandlets in many cases, and of course you know that, um, are built into the uh, operating system or uh, the commandlets rely on something that's in the operating system. So every half year, things change. So what I did here in that screenshot, we'll see that uh, soon in the first demo, um, I just counted the commandlets on the very latest and greatest Windows 10, 1903, and ask yourself how many people do have that in their current environment. So, and you will see in a minute that if you use the latest PowerShell core, which is the six one, because anything else is in preview, I don't focus on that. I only use stable code. Well, I have my customers in, uh, in my head. And um, you see from the numbers, it's, it's almost alike. So, and we will see uh, what that means uh, when I talk about first impressions. So let's, let's switch to my first machine and I guess you will laugh about what I show you now, because of course, many of you know that, but I want to show you the mirror. So first of all, what I showed you, I don't count everything, because I think uh, if we talk about a proper com commandlet, there has to be a dash in it. So mkdir, is, is, to me, it's not a problem. It's not a, uh, it's not a commandlet. It's a more or less an extended alias. So I don't want to count stuff like that and all the, the pesto stuff. I don't want to count that. So I'm only counting here in this environment. You see 1,800, something like that. Um, keep in mind that I'm, that I'm running here PowerShell core. And to not lose the track, I created this uh, fancy prompt just to be sure what is that here for a computer. And of course, you always you all already see that in the prompt. Uh, this is the latest and greatest Windows 10. So j let, just let's check a few commandlets. The first thing is something like test connection. Great. But the second that I try something like test net connection, um, Let's see if that works too. CDC1 dash port. You know, everything is great. 53. And you see, I, uh, it was not necessary to, to write that again. But I just want to show you that um, the uh, tab completion works. So we don't mind that works uh, great. So. The command that worked. The command that worked. Okay, if you, if you mean... Um, that the ping doesn't succeed or stuff like that, okay, that, that might be possible. Now, now it works. So next thing is uh, something like get local user. It's pretty easy. You see that works. And the next thing is get AD forest. 
and everything is great. So what the fuss are we talking about here? Everything seems to work just smoothly and the next thing I try is get some SIM instance, everything is great. But you know what? Ask yourself, I'm not a friend of raise your hands. Don't raise your hands, but think about it. How many of your customers use get SIM instance? My customers just use get WMI object, which is not a good idea because it's slow. And if we want to try get WMI object, no tab completion, you see. And if I'm uh, just trying it, you will see it says uh, there's no command line like that. So uh, personally, that's not very confusing. I guess I like it that, like that. So, but let's just switch to another machine. I will come here in a minute back. Um, now I'm here, you see it at the prompt. I'm here on a one year old Windows 10. Again, from my customers, this is super current. Yeah, if they desire to get there. But what if we just try the same commandlets? There's no get local user. There's not no get AD forest. And just one thing more. There is no test net connection. There's no only test connection. That might be not be um, a problem, but uh, we will see that. So, but of course we can use that. And you see, okay, a ping works. That's great. So, uh, the fun thing about it is that we all know that the PowerShell team addresses these problems. And I will come to that, what, what they did a little bit later on. But first of all, the one thing that you can do is that you can die hard ignore that you're on PowerShell core and say, I want to import that module. And guess what? Very often, because this, this is very important, skip edition check. If I command that out, it will not work, as you see. But the second that I remove the command, it works, it will be imported, and get local user works. What still does not work, there is a little bit more work to do, is importing Active Directory module. And what about the sim commandlet? That still works. I personally think this is very, very confusing because at the end of the day, if you show that to your colleagues, they utilize a very, very current build of Windows from their perspective. Keep in mind that they're, that they're um, migrating from Windows 7 and they still have their migration in mind from Windows XP. And I do know a lot of people who really struggle in the testing environment because they stick on old releases of Windows 10 and it's really hard to keep up with the release schedule. And from my perspective, I expected that um, the, the companies will use the long-term versions, the LTS. See how is it now called, um, but they don't do that. So they really have to keep up with that. Let's go back to my first machine. I'm not yet done. I want to show you one thing more. And then we have to come to uh, Mac OS, of course. So my uh, next demo is yet another thing which amazes me a lot. And I had the pleasure to have to, to talk about that um, uh, to Joy. I really encourage you, I know you do that already, go to the guys, talk to them, um, press it until something good falls out of them. I, it's very, very enlightening to hear from their voice uh, what they think about it. And we, Due to the fact that we have Joey here in the house, we can uh, use him uh, later on uh, to um, solve some problems, to uh, answer some questions that I can't answer, maybe. So, but first of all, let's see what's up here. So, the next thing that my mere model admin will do is uh, fiddle around with the um, file system. And let's be honest, we know, oh, difficult. 
very, very difficult because we have to compete against tools like Robocopy. You can't compete Robocopy. You have to compete tools like iCuckles, which solves problems that get echo set echo doesn't solve. We have to do a lot of work. And um, I always point my um, customers to a session that Eugen Kaltstadt delivered in the, during the first conference here. It's so up to date, I put the notes in the slides where you can find it. And he talked about optimizing file system access. I would say this is just a survival guide to get rid of that. So let's, for example, start with the, the regular admin starts by just listing some files. Okay, great. Um, if he by accident does it with filter, it works. If he by accident, what doesn't make more sense, uses include, it does not work. He will ask you and we will tell him, okay, you have to include the parameter recurse. So, is that new in uh, PowerShell Core? No, it is not. But from my perspective, if I fork a, if I fork a product in my wildest dreams, I would have the imagination that you fix stuff like that. Maybe it's got some deeper sense that I didn't. Uh, found out yet. We will, can talk about that later. Uh, let's do the next thing. Let's talk about long path names. I created a little, little script which does some very boring stuff. I, I only uh, create long final names. So you see I um, can provide here 210 characters and all it does you see that if I point here to the variable is it creates some nonsense um, elements. But the fine thing is here that you can find out uh, using this, what is the maximum length of a path in Windows? We all know there are issues. Is it fixed in PowerShell Core? We will see in a minute. So maybe someone would argue it's not the duty of the PowerShell to fix these problems. Yeah, you might be right. But from someone using it, it doesn't matter. It's just Windows and it works or it does not work. So let's see what happens uh, if I do this here. So just wait a second, I'll show you what I'm doing. Everything that I do is that I randomly create paths that are getting longer and longer. So let's try that out. And I'm doing this from 250 characters to 270. So just find out what that is. And to make it a little bit more impressive, I just show you the folder just for demoing purposes. It's just like that. I'll just wait. That's the problem with demoing something, right? So if this is scratch, you see there is nothing in it. And the second that I put it here, let's see if it works. And over there you can see successfully created something with 260 characters and stuff like that. And uh, failed to create with 200 76 characters. So this is uh, 67 characters, sorry. This is what we expected. But you know the fun stuff. Uh, by the way, I, I delete that. Maybe you saw that uh, directly. Um, but the fun stuff is, keep that in mind, 267 characters. And now once in a while, I switch to uh, Windows, ah, just wait a second, wrong thing. I switch to Windows PowerShell. Just wait a second. Now it's uh, switched to... It should have already switched, I guess. No, it doesn't. Why not? Oh, yo, pardon me, because I screwed it because I clicked on that first. 
I apologize, but okay, so this is 5.1, so I repeat that. <coughs> Fail to create with 260 characters. It doesn't matter if it's 250, 204, whatsoever, but I think if nobody changed anything, why, why is it like that? And we all know that people really suffer from that. And uh, I don't want to talk about all the rest because we, wanna, we have some fancy demo here. So this is just the first part. Um, what's really interesting is I just switched to one year of development of Windows 10. And if you count the commandlets the way that I did it, I installed nothing, just Windows, pure Windows. And after that, I installed RSAT. You will see that in a minute. You see that there is definitely uh, a magic line starting beyond 1803. So what you want to have is 1809 and everything is fine. And it's even more impressive if you count uh, the commandlets that there are offered, um, if you install the remote server administration tools, and I got to add one thing, I installed those RSAT that are aligned with the client operating system. This is not correct. From the official Microsoft documentation, you should always install the RSAT that are um, appropriate for the target server. So this is the office, official documentation. So uh, having said that, if you want to address uh, Windows Server 2012 R2, you only can do that from Windows 8.1, but nobody does it like that. But this is what the official documentation says. So I installed here 18.03, 18.09, and of course, uh, 18.09 is Windows Server 2019. So. Let's come to the more fancy stuff. I said I want to bring you a Mac OS, and I only want to show you the real interesting things uh, in PowerShell Core, because you can, if you've got the right operating systems, you can now um, do your work from a Mac OS system. Last year, we switched it around. We used our Windows machines to configure Linux, this way, the other way around. So the interesting thing is, you need a port to communicate to the macOS or the Linux system or other way around from the macOS system. And there were technologies like OMI. I showed that years ago. It might be in the world, but we all know, and uh, that's again something that uh, where I might quote uh, um, Joey, this is not the, the current focus. The focus is on SH, uh, SSH. So, if you want to set up SSH, it's very easy compared to last year because it's included in Windows Server 2019. And this might not be the best version you can install, but again, from the perspective of a regular administrator, of course, I utilize what's built in the server. And all you need to do is add Windows capability. You can do that online, but there is also a second uh, ISO uh, that you can utilize, uh, that's called features on demand. You may have recognized that. If you have a proper internet connection, you don't need that. All you need is you install that, you start the services, check the firewall, it is automatically opened for SSH. And there are two things that you really have to do, and I will show you in that demo on my Mac. Um, you have to register a default shell in the registry, and you have to, to register a so-called subsystem in the SSHD config. I will show you that in a minute. And I will show you where the difference is. So step four and step five are the things that you have to do. So keep your fingers crossed. Cross that uh, this now works. Um, one thing, I attached that to the files. Um, SSH remoting is not yet complete. There are improvements, uh, more capabilities if you use WinRM, WSMAN. And I refer to the keynote where, uh, again, the people told us that. So let's just start with the Mac OS. I hope you can cope that. So first of all, this is a current stable of Mac OS. And you will see I installed all the fancy stuff. So let's start with a $PS version table. 
You see, again, six, two, one. Let's again count the commandlets. 300, okay, not so much. I will not use them because I don't want to utilize macOS. I want to administer uh, Windows. So again, let's check some basic commandlets like test connection. And I see, okay, as I expected, there is no test net connection. Okay, I don't mind because I, I explored that now you can use um, test connection as a port scanner. You see it here. This is a new feature they built in, and so we can get rid of test net connection. You only have to know that. And as you can see, I can reach my uh, Windows server. And the first thing that I do now is that I do a generic SSH connection to this machine. You can also do that by tools like PuTTY, or you can use the uh, WSL or whatsoever you like. I'm just using here the built-in SSH from macOS. And you see, I can log in now. We already saw that we uh, had a proper connection. And you see now that I'm connected to Windows PowerShell, which is very important. Because if you think about um, all the stuff that is missing in PowerShell Core eventually, you have that here. Of course, you have that here. And if you think about something like uh, Exchange or stuff like that, there are lots of possibilities. But I don't want to use SSH. I want to use PowerShell remoting. So the next thing that I, that I do is that I will switch. But first, let's check if there is something like get AD forest. It takes a while. Just let's see if it comes. So you have to know that I'm not connected to my domain controller. I'm connected to a kind of management hub. And uh, that's the reason why it takes some time here. Ah, okay, now it worked. So it takes a little time um, because this is just a management hub. This is not my domain controller. So it goes, internally it goes to the domain controller. So next thing is, we use enter PS session to do proper uh, PowerShell remoting as a first step. And now you will see there is one major important difference. If you watch out for enter PS session, you see dash host name. This is what makes the difference. Dash host name is, um, key to use secure shell connections. And you see again, I'm connected here. And now um, I'm in the PowerShell environment again, but I'm missing something. Uh, this is my machine, but I'm missing my profile. There's a simple reason um, that I'm missing my profile because during PowerShell sessions, my PowerShell profile is ignored. Uh, I have to change the session configuration if I want to run it like that. So I just loaded it here. So again, I'm now utilizing uh, PowerShell Core again. And now I want to show you what makes the difference, how I configured point 0.4 and point 0.5. The first thing is that for generic SSH connections, you need to change the registry. And I created a little script for that. That's a little bit too much, but I think you can read it nicely here. You have to go to HP Local Machine, Software Open SSH, and you need to define the default shell. This is not um, very important if you use PowerShell remoting, but this is key to using SSH um, from my, the SSH binary from my Mac OS or from my Linux machine. So, and of course, I already did that here. I just wait, I forgot that. And let's, let's see what is the, the default shell. And you see the default shell was configured as um, Windows PowerShell. That was the reason why I saw Windows PowerShell. And now the next element is um, um, how can I do that with um, Windows, with, with, with PowerShell 6 over there? Yeah, it's simply changing the registry key. So I show you that. Um, keep in mind, there is something in line 12. I will explain that to you later. later. But first of all, let's have a look at line 26 at the SSHD config. Because this one is used 
for uh, remoting via PowerShell remoting, via PSRP. And I do open it now. And the nice thing about VS Code here is that you can also use PS Edit. And although this is not PowerShell code, I don't care. And all the Linux guy here in the house, you do know that. This is HD, uh, SSHD, um, the config file. And there is more or less only one thing really important. You might want to allow admin access. This is what's done here. Or you might want to prohibit. But the only thing that I actually changed, uh, we will go to that a little bit later. Let's, let me check out. Uh, here it is. This is the subsystem configuration. And you should focus on line 82 because this is the only thing that works here. What is the problem? Um, of course, I want to remote into PowerShell Core. That's for granted. Um, I could also remote into Windows PowerShell, no problem. But I want to talk about PowerShell Core, so I remote into PowerShell Core. If I would use line 79, it would break because there is a blank in it. And there is a bug in the SSH uh, configuration. It might be already fixed, but keep in mind, I use the SSH daemon from, uh, from uh, Windows Server 2019. So what I've done is I created a folder posh C uh, P W S H and there lies my uh, PowerShell. And one last thing, no profile as you see here is commented out. You can command it or don't do it. You'll never get a profile until you change the session configuration. Told you so before. One last thing that was very annoying to me. Um, SSH users are not, uh, usually don't use admin accounts. So usually that's prohibited. And in SSHD, um, it's a little bit problematic if you allow it because then you have different folders where to put the, pub, um, the public key that you want to authenticate to. So the last lines are very important if you want to use uh, passwordless login. I showed that last year, so I didn't show that here, but just to give you an idea. So final thing, what is this PWSH in root drive C? And I tell you, this is not a real folder. This is simply a link. You can see that here I created it. And you can see it even better if I do that with format table. Yeah, just like that. And I also want to show you how that's done. Because anywhere in the documentation, you all only find mklink. But mklink is cmd.exe, command.exe. And of course, I want to do that via PowerShell. This is the PowerShell equivalent. I put that in the notes. So, if you think, oh, it seems to be complicated, some minor glitches and stuff like that, keep in mind that I'm focusing on, uh, on, on a colleague that's not so deep in this material. So, let's point out the holy grail as I name it. Let's create some Active Directory users. And you will find out that it's actually it's very easy because it's actually the same that you always do, at least if you're a clever admin. Uh, you use implicit remoting. This is what I do use now. This is the way to import proxy commands. And I think if you really want to try that out, it's definitely clever to grab my um, to grab my notes, to grab my scripts, and try it on your own. You will see that that works, and I hope it works now. So, again, this time I created a session, and in to this session, I can give some commands, and of course, I can also utilize get ad domain. But keep in mind. There is no RSAT on macOS, so if I do it directly, there is no get ad domain, but if I invoke it into the session, it works, of course. So, to make this complete, yeah, that works. I will actually really create some uh, users. 
And I thought it would be nice to um, create all the speakers here from the agenda. So everything I do now is that I really import the Active Directory module, what, I, what I'm talking about here. And then you see I've got that nice little uh, little bit rubbish named uh, module here, which displays all my Active Directory commandlets. And yeah, now I can use it directly without invoke command. And let's find out if there are some organizational units. And let's create some users. The fine thing is that I already created the script, so everything I need to do is just run it here. So you see there is a lab. So let's, let's create something. Let's create an organizational unit handover, see if that works. And it doesn't seem to work, but I tried it a few times. I just check out if the error itself is an error because I had investigated it before. And you see, okay, Hanover was created. So there are some glitches in the code where things work, but nevertheless, they display some errors. So you really have to take care of that. So and the last thing is that I now, in this Hanover organizational unit, I want to create some users. I hope you all know what I'm doing here. The nice thing is that I'm utilizing SSH and I'm doing everything from one PowerShell core to another PowerShell core. I do not have to utilize Windows PowerShell here. So let's find out if uh, I'm on the agenda. Yes, I am. Looks good. And now all I want to do is create a bunch of uh, users and then we're done. So, yeah, are we here in track three? Great. So let's start to create some users. So I just push it here a little bit lower so you can see the rest of the script and we're almost done. But there is one, one final frontier it's nice to create some users, but how do I see them later? We will find out in a minute. So everything I do here is that I uh, query the agenda and I create some customs objects. As you see it here, that I transform the information given from the agenda to, um, to my Active Directory object. And the, the thing that I like most, this is line 44, I'm a huge fan of PowerShell pipelining. I always use PowerShell pipelining. I'm, I'm the biggest advocate for that. If anyone uses for each, it's fine. I am the biggest fanboy of for each object. So I always use pipelining where it's suitable and this will work, I hope. So let's see, we created an object that represents Tyler. And now let's see if we can create the users. You see there's a bunch of people And ah, I missed something. Just wait a second. Ah, organizational unit, I created it, but there's a variable. Of course, I need to fix it, but I got it over there. This is an over. Uh, there is one little thing that I want to point want to, want to point on, I want to uh, tell you about. Um, of course, this script is tested multiple times. You can change little thing and it breaks. For example, if you do not use the string, it will break. In Windows PowerShell, on a domain controller, you can also use the Active Directory object and it will be automatically casted into its string. This will not work here. So I really need to, to grab the string. I did that now and let's see if it now works. So we're getting done. Just takes a few minutes again. And for all those security people that have in mind that, of course, tools like domain controllers, servers uh, that are critical to your company are not uh, accessible from anywhere. This is my management hub where I'm connected to. I'm not connected to the Active Directory domain controller directly. So let's see if it worked. And Let's see if we really have some Active Directory users. 
just a few minutes left. I hope that works now. And here we are. But I guess the final frontier is that someone comes to you and says, yeah, where are the users? Yeah, here. Uh, a GUI. What about a GUI? Windows Admin Center. So this is the future. Because of, of course you can utilize that from macOS. And pardon me for the German interface. And there is already an extension of Active Directory. It's in preview state. And let's find out if I see here the users. And you will find out that this does not feed your needs today. Because this is very elementary. If you use the Windows Admin Center, you are very, very limited in many aspects. So Active Directory users and computers is still something that people will use. Um, and Active Directory Administration Center is uh, a tool that people should use, but none of it is on macOS available. So we're back again on Citrix um, remote desktop servers, something like that. So final test here. The hourglass is almost done. I need to hurry up. There is Torsten Woods, for example. But you don't have such a nice tree view or stuff like that. So that's it. Just wait a second. If it shows something about me, yes, it should be. I think, personally, it's always nice to see that that really works. So this is why the reason why I'm al I always try to show demos instead of slides. But of course, it's really hard to keep up here, and you have to try that on your own. So the management summary is, if you're on a current OS, keep in mind I used Windows Server 2019. I have not yet tested any past operating system. But I think it's getting dangerous if you do that. Um, you are here on very current releases of the operating system, but if you like that, you're free to use your Mac OS or your Linux or whatsoever. It works. But well, there is one thing. Is there a need for that, for the mere model, for the regular guy? So I think personally, if you're on the, you are my dev side, right? Just once in a while. My devs want to create stuff. My customers, I'm the admin guy, you are my admin side. They want to buy products. You like open source. I do like open source a lot. I come to your side for a minute. But operators don't care about open source that much. They want maintenance, professional maintenance. That's the job of us. You like agile, agile development, admins like evolution, mature software. You like minimized OSs, that's why you focus on containers. My customers don't use anything like server core or as it existed, nano server, stuff like that. They got the full blown thing. You like the idea of doing everything with SSH because it solves any problem with the networking guys. That's not true. For the other side, they use RDP and that's it. Sometimes people say to me, no, no, we don't use RDP, we use TeamViewer. Okay, that's the same. And you're, of course, you're connected always online, always. My customers, their servers are very often offline. So keep that in mind if you talk about installing Visual Studio Code on the server. Of course, we don't do that because we administer from our workstations. My customers don't do that in many cases. So that's it. I'd like to close this here, um, and I think we can have a huge discussion about that, and I think the time will be not enough to do it right here, but I, I think out on the floor it will be beautiful uh, to talk about that. You might never forget that we are all in echo chambers, in our social bubble. We're always heading to the next big thing. That's not true for anyone. And sometimes people get confused by just other things. And one more thing, tiny one. This is what confuses my customers. 
We can ask Jeffrey if it has a meaning. This is what confuses them even more. And all of a sudden you find out that within two years, it's like that. So I wish you all good luck. I like these people and I think they will have a beautiful job now, getting even more money and, and something like that. But have you ever been asked from someone, hey, why do they all leave the company? Uh, we can ask them here, use it. Use the opportunity to ask them um, if that has any meaning. I get the impression that if you, if you send people to this conference, everyone is, yes, PowerShell is today and tomorrow. But not everyone is here. What a shame. Only 300 people that got the message. We should spread it, I think. We all hate Jeffrey. <laughs> we all hate Jeffrey. Jeffrey is also here. So, haven't seen yet. So I guess this is the greatest opportunity to ask them. I'm quite, I do not know. I'm quite sure that you do not want to say anything in public. So it's up to you to comment on that. It's up to Joey to comment on something or to tell some opinions, to raise some questions. And I really invite you, I, Jeffrey's still here, although he leaves today. Um, I think we can ask him directly after the session if this has any meaning. I don't think so because um, I guess uh, from the keynote, uh, Jeffrey lives in PowerShell and this will never change. But I can't say anything for him. So it's up to you. Any questions, opinions? We got a microphone. Everyone wants to grab a coffee? So finally, I want to invite you to, um, if you want to know more uh, from the people who invented it, I had the chance to talk to Jeffrey, I had the chance to talk to Bruce, and um, I already mentioned Bartek and Joey. I really invite you on my podcast, so uh, maybe you get some proper answers. I do thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Jeffrey, that you were here. Thank you, Joey. Have a nice day.